Hey, yo, internets, man, stop fucking around. Y'all got to salute to this one. Tonight on Complex TV, the Combat Jack Show, we got the Flip Mode Squad general, leader of the new school, conglomerate founder, master of the double time rap, the mighty infamous Buster Rhymes on the Complex Combat Jack Show. Cheers. Yeah. What's up, sir? Salute. Salute, bro. Yo, Buster, man, it's good to see you, man. Good to be seen. Good to see you, too, man. Yo, man, you got longevity on your corner, man. You've been in this game for a long time, man. You think you've been in this game this long, man? Yeah, I definitely feel there's been some good good time put in. You went to school, West George Western House. Yeah, I went to Tilden, too. With, 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 with Biggie? And Ho. And, and Jay-Z. And I was in Tilden with Special Ed and Chip Full. What was your first impression of, of Big, man? How did, how did you meet Big, man? I met Big in school smoking weed. Mm. You know, we was... We, Sticks and seeds in it? All of that. that the, the, none of the dro existed at mm. the time. It was skunk, chocolate... Play bag of nickel. Lamb spread. Lamb spread and the good. Mm. Tie stick. Tie stick. All that type of weed. Mm. None of that other shit existed. Yeah, no, no, no exotic shit. Yeah, so, so, you know, that was it. We, Big had a lot of... A lot of weed, mm. and we would blow trees all the time. And Hove wasn't one of them type of dudes, though. Hove right. ain't smoke, do none of that. He was clean. Yeah, but he was a, he wasn't into the, right. the smoking weed and none of that. And um, you know, we were just always in the lunchroom or in the bathroom blowing trees or artillery park across the street mm. blowing trees, and you know. Go to class when you needed to go to class, but then for the most part, you know, we was hanging out and enjoying just the fun and the, the chicks and just the, the, the partying and the bullshitting. But school was just regular. It right. wasn't like, it wasn't like, you know, you was walking around in there already knowing you was that dude. Right. Any, any, any more than you just felt it on the norm. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you were in school, you still was trying to front like you was the dude anyway. Of course. So, so it wasn't a movie. It wasn't high school rap musical where None of that. it's you, Hove, None and Biggie in the, in the lunchroom, nah, nah. and y'all got a crowd I around y'all and y'all banging on the table. Your turn. It was a <laughs> Never seen Biggie rhyme in school. Mm. I never seen him rhyme. Did you ever see Jay rhymes? We, me and Jay battled in school. Ooh, tell us about that. Man. I took an L. You took an L. Speed rap. Speed rap. Cause he mm. was. He was on that too. I had I had been fucking with the speed rap off and on a little bit mm. because I was really into Papa San and uh, Lieutenant Stitchy mm. and them dudes was classic reggae right. artists at the time. And you know back then me and my homie this dude named Webb. And Dion, these two dudes was Guyanese dudes, but they were so into the dance hall scene. So one day I heard a, a sound clash. It was a King Jammies, I think. Papa San and Stitchy was battling. Mm. It was speed rap. Jamaican, like they was chatting in some speed right. rap shit. But they was so crazy with it, man, that I, I just I wanted to do that shit real bad. Mm. So by the second leaders album, I already thought I was nice with it. Mm. But you know, in school, you know, I'm thinking I'm, I'm able to kill anybody with this, this shit. I got this. And you know, me and Hove, we got to battling, and um, he had it finessed uh, just a little more than me. He, at was, the he time. was a little bit more. more that was um, what he was doing. Right, that right. was his thing. So right. it wasn't like, and he was already putting records out with originators, even though he was still just doing what he was doing right. on his own. You know, he was dibbling and dabbling on their shit at the time. So. You know, he was he was nice with it, man. Mm. He still is, yeah. you know. Still is. You know, he he get to his speed rap and shit and you hear him still put it down. Hey, the right he way. sounds young when he speed raps, Yeah. Man. And you came up in a time when almost every artist was original. Every artist that stood out was dope. They was getting their props for being different. I mean, one of your mentors was Chuck D. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, talk about that relationship with Chuck, man, because I mean Chuck is one of the illest that ever did it. And and the fact that you are, in a sense, a byproduct of him needs to be spoken about, man. Yeah, I mean, my relationship with Chuck to this day is, is probably one of the most brilliant relationships that I have with anybody. How'd you meet Chuck, man? When I moved to Long Island, uh, I was like 12, and um... And was P.E. popping at the time? P.E. wasn't P.E. yet. They, right. was, they was called Spectrum, Spectrum City. Right. There was some contest happening some talent show or some contest happening in Hempstead. Me, Brown, and Dinko went to the contest. 
We joined the shit. We never got a chance to get up to perform because they never called our name. So, you know, we just kind of stepped in them at the end of the show. Like, we, we ain't leaving. Right. You know, y'all niggas won't give us five minutes. Mm. And they, they stopped packing their shit and they listened to what we had to say. And we gave them five minutes just beatboxing and rhyming and shit and they just, they was digging it. So we gets there the next day and we meets with, with, with Chuck and Hank. What's your name at the time? What's, what's, your, what's your rap name at the time? Chill old ski. Ooh, that's old school, B. That's yeah. old school. That was my shit, though, son. Yeah. Chill old ski. <laughs> Niggas couldn't tell I, me nothing. I feel nothing. like you had that ironed on a sweatshirt. <laughs> I had that shit ironed on everything. With the little son. Playboy, you had the Playboy. I had the airbrush shit, all type of shit, uh, mama. Right, right. right. But, but, but long story short, the, the 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 experience was weird when we got up there to meet with Chuck finally because they tried to break the group up. We realized that. If we wanted to get on, we might have to make the sacrifice. So we considered doing this who, shit. Who's, who's, who was getting sacrificed out of the group? No, we all was getting sacrificed. Okay, they getting put split. us in different groups uh -huh. with niggas we didn't so know. So you was going to be in young black teenagers? Nah, I was going to be in Funky Frank in the street force, my nigga. <laughs> 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 who the fuck was Funky Frank? They didn't know who the fuck. They didn't have niggas. Yo, they didn't have, and it was, it was crazy, but right? they made a group with no dudes? They had, they had concepts. Right. Mm -hmm. And logos right for groups without the groups filled in. Right. So they was building these crews. Like, it was some real science lab right. shit. Like, them niggas was really in there just concocting shit. It right. wasn't like you could just come up there dictating what you was doing. Like, they had their vision for and shit. I, and it, look, that was a little of the Motown factory yeah, ethic, too. Like, create shit. it and then and, and, fill it in. And fill it in. Right. Figure it out later. Funky Frank. They had the young black teenagers in the leaders of the new school logos on the wall. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Cameron and, and Scribble and them, we knew them. From, the, from, from, from just the, the neighborhood. Right. And um, they came up there and they wanted the leader's name. And we wanted the leader's name. So they sent us home to write a, a fuck the old school diss record. Yeah, I heard about that, man. And, um, it was heartbreaking to do it, but we had to do it. And you know, we came back and you see who ended up with the name. Yeah. So I just hope that shit never leaked. But <laughs> in any event, you know, when we finally became leaders of the new school, you know, Chuck and them used to bring us to a lot of their shows to open up for them. Right. You know, with our little two song demo tape and just throw us to the wolves mm. and we would have to figure it out. And that was like the best grooming Yo, possible. You know, got booed. We got booed all the time, you know what I'm saying? And you know, motherfuckers don't know who you are. You had to earn that shit. They ain't never heard your record, you know what I'm saying? You ain't really getting introduced as Public Enemy's new artist right. neither. Right. You just getting introduced as your group name and that's it. But when they hit the pinnacle, like when they drop it takes a nation, like like what's going on in your mind? Like, cause that, that's some shit, like that's some fairy tale shit, B. Our Rebel Without a Pause was on that album. Yeah. So they had a meeting with us one day. Before it dropped? Yeah, this is mm. the first record that we heard from a Nations, Take a Nations Ooh. album. So, um, and that record is crazy still. Yeah, we, we, I guess they wasn't happy with, at least they made it seem like they wasn't happy with the way they felt we were valuing our opportunity or our, or our shot mm. that they was providing us with. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So they had a meeting. Was, was it true though? Were y'all not valuing it or? I don't know if that was the case. I just think they just wanted the, was us to work harder right. and just be a little more, you know, like. Business-like focused? Nah, nah. I just think they wanted us to be, they wanted us to, to be a little more forward thinking and, mm. and, and, and less conventional. Like right. they, they wanted our shit, they wanted us to go all the way. Right. They wanted, to, they wanted, they wanted you to come to the studio playing some shit that felt like it would scare them. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. And instead of trying to tell us, cause they always try to speak that shit, mm. when they finally felt like they was able to do it, mm. they played that shit to mm. give us a clear understanding uh, of what they're talking right. about. Because to hear it and then be told about it is two different, two different things. things. Hearing so, it is so, just talking. Yeah. So, so you sitting there and you listening to Rebel. They got a meeting with us and King, leaders of the new school and Kings of Pressure. Right. And they talking to us like they ain't happy with neither one and of like, us. And you're like, all right. And we sitting in a room on some upset <laughs> shit. Like, 
we 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 getting shitted on by giving y'all everything. Every, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that niggas played the the rebel record, and you hearing this this horn going backwards and screaming and what? And niggas just started crying, son. Like, niggas just started <laughs> crying. crying man. Nah, niggas just started crying because because it was just like. This is the most unbelievable <laughs> shit in existence, and we'll never be able to make oh, one of these. We're fucked up. This is fucked up. <laughs> this whole situation is all the way wrong, right. my nigga. <laughs> 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 yeah.